This is the Mind Body Detox Podcast, where we discuss all things integrative health and wellness, interviewing folks from all over the world, sharing insights and wisdom on how to live a healthier life in mind, body, and spirit. Welcome back to the Mind Body Detox podcast. I'm your host, integrative intuitive medium, Kara Lovehart, and I'm really excited to introduce today's guest. So, Udo Erasmus, did I pronounce that correctly? Yep. Yep. So, Udo, Udo Erasmus is the co founder of Udo's Choice Line, and this is found in most whole food stores and health food stores worldwide. And today, Udo is an acclaimed speaker and author of many books, including the best selling Fats That Heal. Fats That Kill, which has sold over, sold over 250,000 copies. He teaches at events hosted by Tony Robbins and Deepak Chopra, has keynoted an international brain health conference, and has traveled to over 30 countries to conduct thousands of live, live presentations, media interviews, and staff trainings impacting more than 25 million lives with messages on his oils, health, peace, nature, and human nature. So for our documentary fans out there, you may have seen Udo in Eating Our Way to Extinction. It's narrated by actress Kate Winslet and also features Tony Robbins and Richard Branson. And Udo has an extensive education in biochemistry, genetics, biology, and nutrition, including a master's degree in counseling and psychology. And so for those of you who've heard my story on getting toxic with lead and going down this rabbit hole of trying to fix myself... And, you know, I was reading up on Udo's bio and not only has had many adventures, an amazing um, uh, traveler like my own self, um, but his journey has taken him to, you know, just being Udo and, you know, life lessons, spiritual journey to creating Udo's oil and more. So Udo, welcome to the show. I would love to hear about how you got from there to now. You have so much spiritual wisdom and all this other <laughs> knowledge and information that I'm yeah. really eager to, for us to dive into. Yeah, well, thank you for having me on. Um, I guess it started during the Second World War. I was born during the Second World War in Poland. Uh, my parents were from Latvia and Estonia. I have German Swedish background. And we were refugees when I was two and a half years old with the communists chasing us in tanks and trucks. And the allies, which we'd like to think of as the good guys, they were using us as target practice on dirt roads, in horse-drawn hay wagons, mothers with young children, and they were shooting at us from planes, basically just using us, us as target practice. And that was pretty intense. I just remember fear and not feeling safe and not knowing what I could count on. I got left behind at one point because my mother decided to get off the road and go through the fields. It was winter, but it was safer in the fields than it was on the roads. There were dead horses and people in the ditches because, it, because everybody was trying to get out of there. And uh, so we were, we were easy targets on the roads. And, uh, and it got me thinking very early. Uh, when I was six years old, I remember uh, listening to people argue about really trivial things. At least it seemed trivial to me as a six-year-old and I, and the intensity of the arguments. And it always made me feel uneasy. And one day I was listening to one of these and a thought occurred to me, man, there must be a way that people can live in harmony. And this little cocky voice from a six-year-old who doesn't know how complicated everything is, I'm going to find out how. So that's been my driver. That's what got me into science to try and understand how things work. Then I got into bioscience to understand how creatures work. Then I got into psychology to understand how thinking works. Then I got into medicine to try and find out how health works, but I only learned about disease. So I went back into biochemistry and genetics because in biological sciences, you learn how health works, how creatures function normally in normal situations, but they don't call it health. I just figured that out later. And, uh, and then, and then, you know, and then I left university because there was still something missing. And what was missing fundamentally was me. You know, you went on the healing journey. The healer's journey so, is the same. It's like, I want to know the why so I can help and affect the world in whether my department or globally or whatever. Yeah. That drive is the healer's journey. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I, 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 when I was on, on it, I didn't think of it that way, but certainly I love helping people. 
uh, in fact, there's something I think built into our nature that when we help other people improve quality of life, less pain, more joy, there's just something very satisfying about that Absolutely. as something to do, especially if we can be, if we can be fully present in all of our being, because we actually, you know, we have to bring our focus inward to get fully present in the space that our body occupies. And then when we're present in that space and we're also present in the space outside, then we get, get to live a, an incredible life with un, untold gifts that we have that we then are, can be in touch with. And then we can help in so many different ways to make life better for other people. So that's kind of like the, the, the short version of, of my, my, uh, my trip. You're speaking our language, everyone that's listening, you know, we're all on this journey to empowerment, to personal health, empowerment, to personal, you know, self-responsibility for fixing whatever we can in the world. And that really does start with the self. It starts with consciousness and it starts with taking care of the body, which then leads to taking care of the environment. So I know you're yeah. so passionate about, you know, preservation of the, the climate and the work and the, the world in general. I was looking at that. Yeah. And so I want to know more about, you know, we're talking about today, specifically, we're going to talk about what uh, was labeled the God molecule and essential mm -hmm. fatty acids. And my mm -hmm. interest is, you know, how does, how we, does taking care of our body affect our consciousness, affect how we operate and affect our interaction with other people. And, you know, tying that all together from that mind body perspective, but tell us about what the God molecule is, because that really leads right. back to your company and oil and all this amazing stuff you do. Right. Uh it, 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 we call it the God molecule because it is the highest energy molecule of all of the molecules in nutrition. And energy is God. That's how it's the and how, that's how it's the God molecule. And it increases energy. We've we've measured in athletes if they do their sport to exhaustion before they start. Then we put them on oil, a tablespoon per fifty pounds of body weight per day, mixed in food and intake spread out over the course of the day within 30 days they had 40 to 60 percent increase in their performance when they did their sport to exhaustion 40 to 60 percent and that's because omega-3 which is the god molecule right the high energy molecule that increases fat burning increases stamina increases oxygen metabolism speeds recovery speeds healing makes hormones work more effectively at the cell receptor level and we're just getting started lowers most of the cardio risk factors decreases inflammation in fact it's the only molecule that is fuel 80 percent of it is burned as fuel and the other 20 percent is converted into other molecules that provide spark control you know you have you you, you know life is a fire right you want to have a good fire because that's your juice. But if you have a good fire, then you get sparks too. Those are called free radicals in the body or uh, oxygen free radicals. And, and those sparks need spark control or else they burn holes in your carpet or you know, do damage in your tissues. Well, here's one molecule that is, gets you a, a good fire and part of it turns into spark control out of the same molecule, opposite functions, out of the same molecule. There's no other molecule that I know of in nutrition that does both. So the last time I talked to someone that was, of course, this passionate about essential fatty acids and about omegas was back in the 90s. And from, am I correct that you started your company in 1994? Uh, I started uh, working with the blend. I actually developed flax oil in 19... 86. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I started in 1980. I got poisoned by pesticides and the doctors couldn't help me. So I tried to figure out because I had the background and I got into oils because they were so confusing. You know, they said on the one hand, it said omega-6 is an essential nutrient, which means you got to have it. You can't make it. You got to bring it in from outside. If you don't get enough, your health goes down. If you don't get enough long enough, you die. But if you bring it back enough before you die, then all the problems that come from not getting enough are reversed. That's the definition of an essential nutrient. So omega-6 is essential, says one study. And the next study says omega-6 gives you cancer and kills you. 
And I'm going, what? <laughs> you get know, to the of that. I have to have it and then it kills me. <laughs> you know, that's like they had talked about God that way too, right? God is your father and he loves you unconditionally. And if you see him, he kills you. If you see, because people used to say when I was a kid, if you see God, you die. And it's like, what's, there's something wrong with that tip, with that picture. <laughs> you know, unconditional love, and then he kills you. <laughs> it's like, what? And it was that conflict, it was that contradiction about omega-6 that's made me look deeper and realize that the damage, that why omega-6s give me cancer and kill you is not because omega-6s, but because the damage done to them by the processing, by industry, and the damage we do to the oil when we put it in the frying pan. Absolutely. Now, the quality, I want to talk about that because back in the 90s when I met this wonderful gentleman who was actually a psychiatrist and he was really gung-ho about we need to have more essential fatty acids because of inflammation in the brain. And so he was very much a pioneer for me, at least as far as practitioners at that time. And you know what mm -hmm. he did? He's sitting there in the middle of his session with me and he's popping like six to 10 of these essential fatty acids, but mm -hmm. there were Sam's Club brand. And I thought, Back then, even I thought, I don't know, like, it, you know, what else is in it? What does he take? He's taking them so much. And he's, well, of course, he was swigging, he's swigging Pepsi and, and <laughs> he was, he was like drinking it down with a Coke or a Pepsi, yeah. I think it was. <laughs> um, but he was so excited about it. And he said, this is the mm. new thing. You got to know, yeah. you have to start taking this. So when I saw you as a, a guest to come on the show, I said, oh my mm. gosh, I need to tell him about this and how, you know, help affirm my thoughts on the, the, the sources of these and, and the quality of it. Cause that's something I was, yeah. I was curious about. Yeah. It's a huge deal because they're the, the essential fatty acids. There's omega three and omega six. Omega six has been known to be essential for a long time, like since 1929. Omega three got established as essential in 1981. 99% of the population doesn't get enough omega three for optimum health. Most people get enough omega-6, but in a partially damaged form. So you've got to fix two problems. Bring in the missing omega-3s and switch out the damaged omega-6s for omega-6s made with health in mind. And both need to be in, made with health in mind. They have to be in the right ratio. They should be in glass because plastic leaches into oils, and you don't want that in your body. And... The and, and omega-3s are five times more sensitive to damage by oxygen, light, and heat than omega-6s. So they are the most sensitive of all of our nutrient molecules too, and they need the most care. And my claim to fame is I did, when I found out all of this stuff about the damage done to oils, I said we should make them with health in mind. And then I developed a method where the, there's no light auction or high temperature gets to the oil from the time it's closed in the seed where it's protected by nature's packaging through the pressing, the filtering, the settling, the filling till it's in a brown glass bottle, in a box, in the fridge, in the factory. And it has to be a very tight program and the industry never did that. The industry always made a mess at the front end then used the chemical feed uh, feast to clean it up at the back end and then did damage to the oil in that, those sloppy processes. And so, um, yeah, so we, so, and then we got really, uh, then, uh, then the year after I got poisoned and I was already thinking about making oils yeah. with health in mind, yeah. omega-3 was established as essential and I went ballistic. Oh my God, we could help so many people. Literally, if we could make oils with health in mind, get them both made with health in mind, get them right, do all, do all the things, all of the painstaking things that you have to do to take care of these very perishable molecules. Oh my God, we could help almost everybody. So and what are some of the signs and symptoms that people are nutrition are nu nu deficient in these oils? The, Cause the it's biggest common, two, right? The biggest two obvious ones is low energy and dry skins. But f fundamentally everything breaks down because every cell requires them. And if 99% are not getting enough for optimum health, then you're gonna, anything in, the research actually says, if you increase omega-3s, the summary research, and I'm add to that, and they're not damaged and they don't contain toxins. Yes, that's a very- oils contain pesticides. Most oils contain pesticides too. So if you get, if you 
uh, bring in omega-3s and they're not damaged, not toxic, you can improve virtually every major degenerative condition of our time. It is the single most widespread nutri essential nutrient insufficiency of our time. 99% ballpark. So when people, it's so funny because when people go down the holistic rabbit hole, you know, mm -hmm. we find all these amazing things that support our health and wellness, mm -hmm. but it, sometimes it takes time and consistency, you know, doing a program, doing meditation, walking, breathing, taking a supplement for the omegas. And how long does it take to start experiencing the benefits of it? Not that long. If you're, if you're doing everything right, you know, we do, a, I mean, we're always looking for magic pills. Yes, exactly. Magic, That's why. Yes. Yeah, magic pills don't magic pills don't work. Yes. Your body's not a magic pill. There's a whole bunch. Of, if you were living in nature, first of all, you'd be running around naked. You'd be getting sunshine, vitamin D. You'd probably be living closer to the tropics than where you are and I am right now. And you would be eating raw things on the fly, right? Because you'd be walk in and you nibble a leaf or you pick a little this and a little that and a berry and whatever it is it would be growing it would go in your mouth you would eat it you know chew it and swallow it that would be fresh food when you go and get fresh food from the grocery store that's not fresh food that's usually two weeks old a week two weeks old right and in when you cut the plant off of its roots then it begins to deteriorate. So you lose some of the benefits that you would have gotten from fresh food. A cow, you know, turns its tongue around grass and then rips it up, right? Chews it up, that's fresh food. So the cow gets fresh food, we don't. And, and life's, life created health in nature. We can't be healthy if we live out of line with either nature or our nature. And every time you get out of line, you, you lose something from health. And nature's mandate for how to eat in nature was fresh, whole, raw, organic, season, in season, local, and for human beings, mostly plants. So where were we because getting the essential fatty acids then when we were eating off the land? What are some of the, the main sources then that we would get it from naturally? Okay, the richest sources are seeds and nuts, but there's a little bit in beans. There's a, a you know sometimes very small amounts. Uh, there's more omega three in grass than omega six, but there's only zero point one percent. But that's where horses get their omega threes from, and that's where animals that eat grass get their omega threes from. Right, so there. And, and of course, a, a horse will eat like 50 pounds of grass in a day, not yeah, maybe 50, maybe 25, quite a bit. So if you wanted to get all your omega threes from plants, from, from grass, you'd have to eat a lot of grass. Right. Right. And we are the high, high omega three creature on the planet because our brains are bigger and omega three uh, is about half of the fat in the brain. Uh, omega six as well. Uh, and we need it for vision, uh, and it's good for energy. Like I said before, increases oxygen metabolism, but we tend to need more than that. I used uh, four tablespoons in winter of an oil that is about 50% omega-3. So that's- and Do you take uh, it straight, or how do you take that? No, you mix it in food. Basically, oil belongs with food, so you lose it in food, and it goes. it's compatible with all foods, Except when you eat carbs, you should lower your carbs. When you make oil, you're, you're uh, more of a fuel source uh, because otherwise the, the, you, will, you can actually put on weight, then you blame the oil, but the carbs is what gets you the weight because okay. the body turns carbs into fats. If you don't burn them, you wear them. Right? That's good. That's good yeah. to know. Yeah. So, and they are, but they're compatible with all foods and you don't want to use them for frying. You keep them refrigerated. They're in glass. You add them to food after it comes off off the fire, off the heat source. So you can put them on hot soup and on steamed vegetables. Uh, but you don't use them for frying because if you fry them, they will get damaged and they will fry your health. Fried oils fry health. 
<laughs> fried foods fry health, increase inflammation and risk of cancer, whether it's carbs you burn or protein you burn or the oils you, you, you overheat. Wow. So how many of us yeah. are doing that? It's so it's so common. I mean, I don't eat a lot of fried foods. It's like yeah. my, part of my thing. I feel I get the inflammation. I feel that within 24 hours. Yeah. But I know a lot of us are not even aware of that, that maybe on our journey and our health uh, journey that we're taking, we're not there yet. We're not having that mm -hmm. awareness, but it's so common. So what are some ways that you use the the healthy oils in your daily routine well, that are that are fun and not fried? Yeah. Well, the first one, the first one is that I give some advice. Go get your frying pan wherever you keep it, turn it upside down, hit yourself on the side of the head with it so it's associated <laughs> with pain and throw that stupid thing out. Frying is the single most damaging thing we've ever invented to do food regarding health. Dumbest thing we ever invented. It is really, 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 really dumb. Every time you, eat the, you pull out the frying pan, feel really, 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 really dumb. <laughs> And then, and then cook in water if you're going to cook or eat raw when you can, right? If it's food is contaminated and you have to kill the bacteria, so you have to cook it. And add oils after, you, after the, you've cooked them. But don't add oils damaged by industry. Add oils that are made with health in mind. I know when I, I bought your, your products years ago, and I believe it came with an amazing recipe for making salad dressing. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the ways that I started incorporating oils into my daily routine that made it, you know, really obviously delicious for my lunches yep. and everything. Um, but I'm curious about, you know, other ways that we can incorporate essential fatty acids into our daily life. And what is like the mm -hmm. dosage? Like, how does that work for, yep. for your, your, your line? Okay. Shakes, shakes and smoothies. Very okay. easy. Yeah. Right. But you can put it in mashed potatoes. But remember, mashed potatoes are carbs. Salad dressings. Uh, I get tahini. You know what tahini is, right? Yeah. Sesame. So organic, non-roasted sesame seeds. So it's like peanut butter, only it's made out of sesame. Yes. I dump, I dump off the sesame oil because it's an omega-6 oil. Put in my oil which is a, because it's a better oil. Mix that in. And then I put in all kinds of spices. I love spices. Cayenne, ginger, uh, um, um, black seed, clove, uh, ashwagandha, amla, bacopa. Yeah, I mean, I didn't eat my lunch yet, Udo. So I'm thinking yeah. of crackers and I'm thinking of vegetables and dipping. Yeah, all yeah, of yeah. Those delicious. That sounds amazing. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, and then I mix all of that up and then I dip raw broccoli in it and I eat the broccoli. That sounds amazing. And I dip carrots in it. I eat the carrots and I dip cabbage in it and I eat the cabbage, right? Because I eat most of my food is raw. Can I, I ask, a, can I ask yeah. your age? May I ask your age? I'm 80 this year. Because I'm just thinking to myself, you know, you guys who are not watching the video, the just the vitality that I talk about all the time on the show that comes with health and vibrancy and that comes with eating well. And then of course the spiritual aspect of things like you are mm -hmm. just radiating it. And I'm just, I'm just so excited yeah, of course to, yeah, yeah. to chat with you about it, but I want to know, you know, about your journey. So, but for, let me for, finish oh, sure. answering your question. You, you said how much yes. tablespoon per 50 pounds of body weight per day. So for most people, okay. for most adults, it'd be two to four tablespoons. You need more in winter than in summer. Because in winter, you burn more for heat. So I use about two or three tablespoons in summer and four in winter. And I measure how much my intake is by how my skin feels because skin gets the essential fatty acids last and loses them first. Because you can live with dry skin, but if your heart dried out or your liver dried out, that wouldn't work for you. So nature makes sure that the inner organs get the oil they need as a priority and skin gets them last. When you get both essential fatty acids, they form a barrier in the skin against, against the loss of moisture and your skin becomes soft, smooth, and velvety, and you don't need gunk on the outside of your skin. So best way to oil your skin is from within with the essential fatty acids. Both of them are part of that that uh, barrier, that skin barrier. That's why we use skin as our measurement. And so if your skin is dry, you need more oils. 
In winter, skin is drier than in summer. You need more oil in winter than in summer. And in a desert, dry skin shows up better than in the tropics. But even in the tropics, dry, sh dry skin will show up. Wow. So, so I use four tablespoons. That's 56 grams. So when your psychiatrist popped his six or eight or 10 pills, he was 46 pills short of what he actually needed. And he was probably using fish oils, which are quite damaged. Yeah. Yeah. He was using and, fish oil. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, uh, and uh, he probably was a student of a guy by the name of Richard Kunin, who was in San Francisco. And he kind of pioneered uh, some of the education on omega threes. And I, I knew him this is a long time ago, quite a quite a while ago. Anyway, um, yeah, and then and then people got excited. We started a buzz over flax oil. We 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 started flax oil in 1986, and we created a buzz because we were excited about it. Oh my God, we could help so many people. I had no business background. It was all on enthusiasm. And we made decisions about standards and how to make it and how to put the machinery together and, and uh, you know, uh, everything. We, who we would do business with. If they didn't have refrigeration, we wouldn't let them be our distributor. We just set the standards and we, we did not budge on the standards. Because if you want them to unfold their health benefits, you got to give them the care they need in order to do that to stay fresh. Absolutely. Yeah, too yeah. often I think in in just in our regular healthcare system we've cut corners and we really aren't you know doing yeah, the quality yeah. quality of care and, and 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 food and all that in any anyway. So I think it's amazing yeah. that you have that level of integrity in the company. Yeah, and 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 when you cut corners there's a downside. There are consequences. Everything has a consequence. Right. Every action you take has a consequence. We like to think that we want freedom without responsibility, but I'm sorry, freedom comes with responsibility because actions have consequences. You know, and so sometimes people want freedom without responsibility and then other people like to saddle you with responsibility without freedom. No, 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 no. This has to be self responsible. You have the freedom. And you need to c consider the consequences of what you do, how you live your life. And, you know, we're living a time where the exposure of the corruption in just about everything going on is all over the place. It's in the oil industry, it's in the medical industry, it's in the media, it's in the, it's in the pharmaceutical companies, it's everywhere. It's in I the governments. It's I think it's amazing oh because then the consciousness of people, we are so now like, it's so in our faces in all sectors that we're like, mm -hmm. huh, well, now we shift over to what we want. We want truth. We want to know the big questions of uh, the big question. Why that starts to, to to kind of bubble up from the unconscious of people. Why is this that way? Yeah. Why is that way? And the passion that's driven you that you've shared that's driven you to to yeah. be everything. If people start to adopt that, why and what what's this and question, they start to learn. They start yeah. to empower themselves and take that self responsibility, which yeah. I think it's an exciting time to live. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. I think the one of the best things about COVID, it it put people into their houses to have to be with themselves. Yeah. And they a lot of distractions got taken away. And a lot of people, I used to say to people, oh, if you can't go outside, just go inside. That's easy for me to say, because I've been going inside for 50 years, right? Yeah. And I'm pretty yeah. good at it. So I was not, I, lockdown didn't, was not a big deal for me. Yeah. So look, if I can, okay, you know, I'll just, I turned my television off though because it was just like on and on and on and on and on. And I turned the television off and I'm sitting in my living room and I'm looking around and says, oh my God, it's so peaceful here. <laughs> I, you know, because we have, we, we have power over the button on the television, right? Mm -hmm. And we turn it on and we get all this negativity and we feed ourselves with this negativity. At what point do we get tired of it? Do you yeah. really need to hear all that stuff? Yeah. You know, you can go go to your neighbors and watch them take care of their children and get really inspired how much effort they make, how much sacrifice they make, you know, or watch the grass grow or watch the flowers unfurl or or just breathe. Yeah. Right? There's so much Im amazing stuff going on. And but media always gets you the negative stuff. Absolutely. And why is that? Because it because it get puts you into survival mode and it activates fear. 
And when you're afraid, they can impose stuff on you. So they give you the fear and then say, oh, here's, here's our magic. We're going to save you with this. And usually it's pharmaceutical drugs, which yeah. don't belong in the body because nobody has ever lived on this planet who was suffering from a pharmaceutical drug deficiency. Yes. Because we're made out of food, water, and air, and light is our life. Yes. Solar energy is our life, right? So, so how does the consciousness of a person shift and change when they, when they, you know, they work with nutritional deficiencies and, and get their doses of omegas and start to see she shifts in their body shifts and all that, but how does it affect then their quality of life that can potentially lead to this mindset and the vitality mm -hmm. that you're talking about that, you know, watching the grass grow and being present in your own body is so important. Have you seen connections with that, with people being able to then live <clears throat> more of a present life? I tend to say to people nutrition and consciousness are two completely different areas but it's not quite true it's not quite true because if you have more energy you have more vitality you can do you're more uh competent and because you're more competent you're also more confident and when you feel good hanging out with yourself is actually interesting but if you're really tired and you've got pain everywhere and everything's too much work and oh my god you know some people check out check the check out their body they destroy yeah. their body because it's just not worth living yeah. so so to some extent our energy level gives us vitality elevates our mood uh and in part it's because it makes us more competent and it's part because we just have more energy yeah. but there's a, there's a part that's not affected by food, which is that if you want to connect to the solar energy, that when it's in your body, flowing through your body is called life energy. And its nature is unconditional, empowering love for your body. If you want to get to know that, you actually have to sit still. You actually have to go to a place where you say, okay, how still can you be? And then how deeply can you go into that stillness? And then how long can you stay there? And how lightly can you breathe? And how slowly can you breathe? And as you're sitting down, getting to stillness, discover what is in the space your body occupies. You can find light there, you can find sound there, you can find feeling there. What does it feel like to be alive? What is there that you can observe within your own being? Right? And you find that unconditional love. And then if you, when you feel that, it's like, I feel so cared for. I've just fulfilled the number one purpose for being alive, which is to be fully present in it, because that's a gift. I, life gave me and you can't enjoy it for me and if i don't enjoy it for myself it's a wasted gift so that's purpose one purpose two i feel so cared for it's not about me anymore i'm taken care of if i don't feel taken care of i know where to go to feel it because it's always there and then you look around and say okay well it's not about me anymore what needs to be done around here how can i help how can I make the biggest splash for good in the time that I have, right? It changes the orientation. And, and it's because of that, that, that to go into that presence has to happen before we will fix the mess we've made on the planet. Absolutely. It begins with us becoming fully present. And if you go behind the love, there's also all encompassing peace that is everywhere, that is everywhere all the time. But our access is deeper, just a little bit deeper than that unconditional love, than that energy. And that's just awareness, yes. awareness or consciousness, right? And yes. you tap into that, oh my God, it is peace is everywhere. And when you feel that peace, then you begin to express it into the world. It's very different than when you're angry you know, we immediately you see angry, you want to, you see enemies. 
right? And then you see enemies and then you start living into the world as though it was full of enemies. And if you're fearful, you see danger and then you live into the world as though it was as, as though it was full of danger. And I mean, there's dangers in the world. It's not like there are, isn't. But your state of being determines how you're going to live into the world. And because we're discontent, because we got disconnected from ourselves, it's a natural process. After we're born, our senses take us out into the world because we have to get to know it for survival. Got disconnected from ourselves. With that disconnection comes discontent. And all of what's wrong with the world was created as an expression of our discontent. Not going to get fixed until we return to our contentment. Absolutely. Everything you're saying is exactly exactly we talk about a lot on the show because it is yeah. about we, I said mentioned earlier being the healing the healer's journey and the healer's yeah. journey does start with having to take that time to sit with the self go yeah. in heal, and heal, heal the heal self your, because then physician, it becomes a reflection they say, of the world. Physician heal yourself, right? Yes, yes. Start with that. Absolutely. Yeah. And so many of us, like, I love that you said that when we are oriented as a child, we are aware of everything around us to get to know the world, and that's what takes us a, away from that that inner peace and inner yeah. knowing and yeah, that because, is absolutely what we're still focused on we got to fix everything else yeah because because in our mother's womb i call it the buddha tank right <laughs> because in our mother's womb there's no place to go there's nothing to do everything's taken care of pretty safe you have no images you have no visions you have no words you don't even know who your mother is you don't even know that there is such a thing as a mother you're not even breathing. And so you're there in there floating around in the tank. Right? Sometimes you see little fetuses, little smile on their face, right? So you're just hanging out there. And you think it would be the most boring, bloody thing to be having happening, but you're not bored. Why is that? Where's your focus when you're there? Well, your focus didn't have any any outside to go to. So it was at rest inside in its source in life in awareness mm -hmm. and so you spent the first nine months of your life in deep meditation present inside absent outside then you get bored now you your awareness goes out you become present outside absent inside that's where heartache began and heartache is your call whatever you call it, because we have lots of words for when you're, when you have that uneasy feeling in your chest, restless and empty and blues and lonely and grief and sorrow and loss, you know, so yearning, striving, um, longing. So we have so many names for that feeling, that uneasy or painful feeling in our chest that is triggered by all kinds of things on the outside when they end. But it's actually the trigger is not the cause. The cause is as a natural process of coming into the world. We got disconnected from ourselves and heartache is the call to bring our focus back home inside to life. But nobody tells you that. No. Until you, you have that pain so long that you desire to eradicate it and you have to find yeah. some way. And that way is so yeah. many, you know, different for people. They look outward until they find it inward again. But yeah. thank yeah, you if so you like, If you run into somebody on the outside who tells you that what you're looking for is on the inside, that would be called the teacher of that, right? Or, uh, or you figure out that I've done this and I've done this and I've done this and you run out of distractions. Because at some point you say, okay, well, I've done everything I could. No, you know what? It's not out there. It's got to be inside. And that's what happened to me when my son was born. You know, it was like amazing, unbelievable, you know, beautiful. We called him the Rosebud Prince because there was such peace. When he was sleeping, it was so peaceful. But what was aching here didn't go away. Yeah. Still there is that, oh my God, it's not about anything on the outside. That was my last yeah. thing. And then I started, then I started looking inside. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I, and then, yeah. 
I just love hearing about your journey. I could talk to you probably for hours and there's so many stories that I'd mm. love to hear about. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm curious for, you know, going into a final couple questions here, mm -hmm. you know, for exploring, you know, the God molecule and mm -hmm. in, in, in how that's that life force, that energy that, that the EFA support, how, how do you, as a, a, a person start to explore more of that along with the state of consciousness you're talking about. I'm curious how those two can connect a little bit further. Uh, <clears throat> I guess I'd have to say it this way. There are eight parts to being, to human being and human surroundings. And each one of them has a different nature and a different function, needs a different kind of attention on a regular basis goes off in a different way and responds to a different kind of intervention. That's, that's, it's a, like a bullseye model. And what are they? Internal awareness is different from life energy, is different from inspired purpose, is different from physical body, is different from survival or protective mind, is different from social group, is different from natural environment, and is different from the big picture of infinite awareness. So each one of them needs a different kind of attention. I mean, that's not, that's not such a big deal because you know, you eat breakfast and you go to the bathroom, you got to deal with both and you got to deal with sleep too. And you got to deal with work too. And you got to deal with driving from wherever you are to wherever you need to go. So we're always doing so many things every day and we give each thing the attention it needs in order for it to serve the purpose that it serves. Why isn't that the same for those eight parts? Yeah. Right? And the most neglected are the first three, internal awareness, life energy, and inspired purpose. And because those are all internal and neglected is why we, we live such crazy lives. Because when I feel calm and content and in peace, and unconditionally loved, you want to be around me, you know, and I'm not going to give you stupid ideas and I'm not going to make you do stupid things. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, so I would say we live in a time where 8 billion people need to take on the journey back home in the world, in, in the, into the space that their, their body occupies. And all of the things that are not working for them are not present in that space. And when they're in that space and they feel cared for, not by other people, but by life itself, always 100%, 24, 7, 365, lifelong, life loves your body unconditionally. So if you can't get the love outside, go inside. It's already there. Yeah. Right. Everybody yeah. is so, every human being is so loved inside by life. And you get your good advice there and your master lives there. In fact, life is the master and all the masters, what the, all the masters talked about was the master inside of every human being. Every human being can live the life of the master, but it requires sitting down quietly and, and bringing focus inside into the energy that is life and that energy is solar energy that goes through green leaves that is stored in bonds between atoms to make molecules when we eat those we absorb them and in our cells they're broken down that solar energy is released and now we call it life or life energy it's still solar energy so we are actually solar energy gadgets right and if you go subjective, if you bring your focus deliberately into that energy, then you have the experience, the divine experience that the masters talked about. Every human being has the same thing in them that the masters had in them and that they talked about. You know, and this, you know, if you take it religion, the second coming is when everybody recognizes that that the the Christ story is every human being story. We all we all uh, conception is immaculate. We're all born lowly, 
between the urine and the excrements is what one of the Christian uh, apologists said. We are all born between the urine and the excrements. You know, we, 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 get, we come out, we learn, we make a contribution. Eventually, every body gets crucified by one thing or another, either old age or disease or bullet or, or uh, accident or whatever. And death is not the end. Because the energy that is, is your life is formless and indestructible. So is awareness, formless and indestructible. And when the body and that, that energy separate, the energy becomes invisible, not, not to you, but to everybody else. Because you actually are in that energy, you are that energy, and your body goes back to the elements it was made from, which is what? Air, water. And, and dust, right? So the, so the master story is everybody's story. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Everything you just shared is, is, is the, 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 the existential conversations I have with my, my friends yeah. and family and spouse. It's, it's, it's like the same narrative, exactly. So it's like, yeah. um, I just honor you um, from one soul to the other to that reflection of ourself that, yeah. you know, this is, this is, the, it is the truth. It is so true. And we're not listening to the sun is what I was hearing. You know, the solar energy, the sun has so much information um, on an on energy consciousness level. And then, of course, putting it into the body and it becoming it, it is the light that in the life force that feeds us. I just love how, yeah, it how runs you share everything. That, that journey it runs it, it everything. Really is true. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And life yeah. runs everything, you know, so you like we like to listen to politicians and experts. Why? Your expert lives inside of you. You want to know how to live? Ask life, right? Yeah. Yeah. And everybody, everybody, that, you think about it globally, everybody has the same master inside of them, doing the same love, doing the same care, requiring the same building blocks for body construction, right? Everybody. So we could actually live on the planet, everybody following the same master or the same ruler or the same benevolent dictator, whatever you want to call it, right? And everybody could live in harmony. Yeah. There's a solution to my six-year-old question. Yes. Right? Everybody can. No. Will everybody? Well, that's up to every individual. Absolutely. Right? Yep. But is it possible? Absolutely. It doesn't matter where you were born or what your history is or what your race is or what your gender is or what your age is. The same master lives in every human being, everywhere, 8 billion people. Yeah. And that same energy also runs the plants and the animals and the microbes, because it's mostly solar energy creating, using a genetic program that it created over eons of time to create creatures according to that program. Yes. Right? Same, so, but the same energy running everything, weighs nothing, runs everything, omnipresent in you, omnipotent in you, and omniscient in you. That's a definition of God. Everywhere present, all powerful, and all, know, all knowing in you. Personalized presence of the divine. Yes. So everyone sit for a second and just feel that because that's absolute truth that you're being heard. You can rewind it and listen to it again and again. Obviously that's the best benefit of recording, but I would ask then for going forward here in our interview, is there anything that we would need to know to connect with you further, learn more <laughs> about your backgrounds or anything like yeah. that, that we can support everyone. Cause I know that everyone's hanging on the edge of their seat, wanting to learn more. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to talk about the oils and I work with enzymes and probiotics and digestion as well, udoschoice.com, U-D-O-S choice.com. If you're more into the educational, that's, I, it's a work in progress. It's called Udo Erasmus or the Udo.com, T-H-E-U-D-O.com. And we're, that's just, that's a work in progress. There's lots of stuff on there that I don't like. And uh, we're, we're building that. But most, most important is get in touch 
with yourself and the place to start is sit with the ache in your heart don't you know we distract ourselves from it because we don't like it it's like it's uncomfortable we don't like it so we distract ourselves or ignore it or deny it or try mm -hmm. to explain it away or blame it on somebody and what i'm saying is this is your journey it's calling you to come home sit with it because less than a hair's breadth behind that ache is your wholeness so use that to to call yourself home to yourself sit with it quietly calmly just feel it don't judge it accept it acknowledge it embrace it because it's the second greatest gift you have heartache is the second greatest gift you've been given other than being alive because if it wasn't for heartache you would never find your way home so use it as your as your starting point for this short journey home to your, home to the magnificence of your own existence and then live your life and just give that a little bit of attention every day stillness practice every day just like you go to the bathroom every day if you don't go to the bathroom every day it's a problem if you don't spend time in stillness with yourself it's a problem so that's it's amazing thank you thank you so much i yeah, think and this is and we can incredible. do this and we can do this again wonderful Okay, everyone. So don't be like, oh my gosh, we're not going to have him back. Is he going to come back? We're going to do it again. Yes, we are. Yay. Okay. So um, for for the final two questions, Udo, I mm -hmm. ask everyone for their first round of uh, the episodes with us here on, on, on an episode. I ask, what's your favorite wellness topic, product, or self-care indulgence at this time? What is it that you love to do that supports and fills your cup up? I think the biggest one is the stillness practice. Yeah. And why is that? Because when I feel when I feel like my life is worth living, then I will automatically do the best I can to make sure that I'm around as long as I can. And that means I'll choose foods that I know will sustain me and I don't use the stuff that I know won't. And we all know, know a lot more than we put into practice. So then why don't we put it into practice? Because we're not inspired enough. Why aren't we inspired enough? Because we don't spend time in inspiration at home within our own being enough. So that for me, I think I would say when it comes to nutrition, it's obviously omega threes because they're the most neglected and the most uh, widespread deficiency. And, uh, and so it's kind of like I, my preference is for the biggest topics right the one that everybody needs that hardly anybody's getting i like those topics yeah they make yeah. the biggest impact yeah because yeah because and it because it's not about me trying to figure out how am i going to get myself taken care of i i'm good i'm taken yeah. care of yeah. right so now i can say okay uh, give me a big one <laughs> give yeah. me the biggest one you got and let me see if i can't make a difference in the biggest arena that is possible to make a difference in Absolutely. Yeah. So the final question is, yeah. since this is the Mind Body Detox podcast, we talk about detox a lot and we go through yeah. in mind, body and spirit. But what would you if you could detox one thing in this world right now? What would it be? The, th the thinking program you, that you inherited from your culture. Detox the mind. Because when you get the, when you get that out of the way, everything else opens up, right? Why, why, why aren't we all walking around lit up? Because we had the lights already there. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we? Why? Because we have ideas. Like you could, oh no, you, oh no, oh no, the divine is not in you. Even though we say God is everywhere, yeah, but it's not in me. That's what that's what we've been told, right? Or you'll never amount to anything. Right or or whatever they are, or you're really stupid, or God, you're ugly, or whatever. Those are all just things that people have said to us that were never true, and that are complete garbage. So if you if we can, and and you can't even take out the garbage. What you have to do is you have to go into the into the gold inside, and the gold will wash out the garbage. So that's the mental detox I'm talking about. 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Love yeah. it. Love it. Thank you so much. I honor you so much for an amazing journey, walking the talk, doing your own work and healing the self and getting in there into the, and, and connecting with the stillness, because as you are aware, how much of an impact that makes. And that's what we're trying to, of course, yeah. with all the guests we have on, how can we inspire people? Because every day it has to become a practice consistently before. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you again, Udo. We would love to have you back. And uh, again, thanks for yeah. listening, you guys, and be well until next time, my friends. Thank you for listening to the Mind Body Detox podcast. We wish you wellness and health in your mind, body, and spirit. And be well until next time, my friends.